Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking an in-depth look at the new Whooplite VTX from HD Zero. Now, if you saw my last video on this VTX, you know that it was kind of a high-level review of the product and I gave my feelings after using it. But in this video, we'll be zooming in on the VTX and looking at it in detail to cover everything you need to know to integrate it into your next drone. Let's start with the size and shape. Just like the previous Whoop VTX, the Whoop Lite features a 25.5 millimeter mounting pattern, which will fit most Whoops and a lot of larger drones without the need for any adapters. You'll notice the VTX is an interesting design where the mounting holes stick out a bit farther than the board itself. If you measure from the widest part of the board on the outside of the mounting holes, it's 32 millimeters, but the inner part of the board is only 29 millimeters wide. I like this design because it still fits the standard mounting dimensions, but it gives you a little bit of extra clearance on the sides of the board in case you need to run a wire up past this VTX on a really cramped build. You'll also notice that the mounting holes are much larger than the ones on the previous Woot VTX. That's because this VTX is designed to be soft mounted, but we'll cover that more in a moment. But first, let's talk about this metal shield. It really gives this VTX a striking appearance and it's not something that we've seen on any other HD Zero VTX before. The shield is really just intended for physical protection, so it's not made to reduce RF interference and it doesn't act as a heat sink or anything like that. I do think it might help a bit in a harder crash and it might prevent other components on the drone from knocking into the VTX in a collision but it is easily removable if you prefer, and you can install it and remove it with really no difficulty because it's just secured with little metal clips. And you might find yourself wanting to remove that shield because it does add weight to this VTX. With the shield on, the total weight is 6.62 grams, but if you remove the shield, the VTX weighs only 4.55 grams. So that shield is adding almost 2.1 grams of weight to the VTX. For comparison, the original Whoop VTX weighs in at about 5.74 grams, so you're saving a little over a gram if you use this new VTX and don't install the shield. I said we were gonna come back to the mounting holes, so let's cover that. This VTX is designed to soft mount with M2 screws, so the mounting holes are about three millimeters to accommodate a rubber mounting gummy with the M2 screw. I found some that were a perfect size and a little kit from Beta FPV, so I'll link that below if you're looking for a specific recommendation. This is a good change because you really do want to soft mount this VTX. From what I've experienced myself and what I've seen online, it really seems like this is the best thing you can do to give your VTX a better chance of surviving crashes. It was always a little difficult to soft mount the previous Whoop VTX, so I'm really glad they designed this one with that in mind and made it really easy to do. This is a good improvement. Let's move on to the connections on this VTX. If we start with the solder pads, we've got a normal set of connections that we're used to seeing on an HD Zero VTX. Power is definitely the most interesting one here, so let's start with that. You probably already know that one of the headlining features of the Whoop Lite VTX is that it's 1S capable, and that's definitely something new for an HD Zero VTX. I did some testing with a benchtop power supply and I found that it functioned at 2.9 volts, but it cut out at 2.8 volts, so 2.9 is about as low as you can safely go on this VTX. In terms of the maximum voltage, this VTX supports up to 3S, so that means you shouldn't try to go above 12.6 volts. Whenever possible, and especially if you're using this on 3S, it's always a good idea to put a capacitor across the power leads to protect the VTX from voltage spikes above that 12.6 volts. This is a reduction in spec from the previous Woot VTX, which supported up to 6S voltage input. But don't forget that you can run this VTX off of a 5 volt pad on your flight controller, which I think is gonna address most of the concerns about using this on larger drones. Now on a 1S drone, you probably are going to need to connect this VTX directly to the battery leads. That's because this VTX is going to pull over an amp at the full output power at 5 volts, and a lot of flight controllers that are made for 1S drones can't supply that much current on the 5 volt pad. But for larger drones, I think the 5 volt is a great option. Moving on to the other solder connections, we've got the TX and RX pads, which you'll need to attach to the RX and TX pads of a physical UART on your flight controller. This is standard for HD0 VTXs, but you'll have to do that if you want to see OSD elements and use stick commands to control the VTX. One new upgrade from the Whoop VTX is that the Whoop Lite VTX includes another pad for smart audio. This is an optional pad that you can connect to a second UART on your flight controller to control the VTX with smart audio. You probably won't need that unless you want to use a switch or a script on your radio to control the VTX. Now let's look at the other connections on the VTX. First up is the firmware update port, and you'll notice that this one looks a little bit different than the HD0 firmware update ports you've seen before. This one is a bit smaller. 
You aren't going to be able to plug a standard HD0 firmware update cable into it, so they've included a cable with a smaller connector and this little adapter board that lets you plug a normal firmware update cable into it. So you're going to need to keep track of this cable and this adapter because you'll need to use them along with your original firmware update cable to update the firmware on this VTX. I get that they wanted to reduce weight and so that makes sense, but you just need to make sure you keep these things in a safe place because you are going to need them later. Finally, the last two connectors we have are for the MIPI camera cable and the antenna. The MIPI connector is exactly what we've seen before, and there's nothing special here to hold the cable in place. If you're worried about it popping off in a crash, I've heard of people putting a drop of E6000 glue on it to hold it in place. The antenna connector is the UFL connector like we typically see on HD0 VTXs, but there is a slight change here. They've cut out the board a bit on either side of the connector, and the idea behind this is that you can put something like a dental rubber band around the board and antenna connector to hold it in place. They actually include a few tiny rubber bands for that purpose. I get what they were going for here, but I guess I'm a little bit skeptical. I don't feel like that rubber band's gonna stay on too well, and I kinda think in any crash that's hard enough to pull that antenna connector off of the board, I don't think the rubber band's gonna stop that from happening. It's nice that they thought about this and tried to do something there, and I haven't actually seen it cause a problem yet, but I just don't think it's gonna help that much. And finally, let's cover the functionality of the Whooplight VTX. Now, as always, you'll want to update the firmware to the latest version before you actually use the VTX. And when you go to do that, you'll notice that this VTX uses the exact same firmware file as the race VTXs. So that gives you a clue that the functionality and capability of this VTX is pretty similar to the other HD0 VTXs. It's selectable between 25 and 200 milliwatt power levels, just like the previous Whoop VTX and race VTXs. You will notice a difference in performance between those two levels. 200 milliwatts is the obvious choice for flying at longer distances or around obstacles, but I actually found myself selecting that lower 25 milliwatt level for indoor and backyard flying. The performance of HD0 is really good at that lower level, and it keeps the VTX from heating up too much. I don't really have a way to scientifically verify these output power levels, but anecdotally, it felt to me like the range and penetration of this VTX were very similar to the previous Whoop VTX. I also unintentionally tested the durability of the VTX several times, and while I'm sure there are ways to crash it that will kill it, I haven't run into any trouble myself, and I feel like the VTX is reasonably durable. It's not going to be as resistant to crashes as the larger HD0 VTXs, but this should be great for whoops and micros. So to sum all this up, I think they've made some solid design improvements here. The Whoop Light VTX is smaller and lighter than the previous Whoop VTX, which is always a win. It's made to work with soft mounting, and it has that optional metal shield for builds where the weight isn't critical. I think all of those qualities are going to make this VTX more robust and durable than the previous Whoop VTX. The power output and performance match the other HD0 VTXs I've used, and now we can power this on 1S. Really the only spec regression is that lower maximum power output, and I really don't think that's going to be a problem since you can power it off of a 5 volt pad. Honestly, I can find very little wrong with this design, and I'd be perfectly happy if this completely replaced the older Whoop VTX. I think it's an improved design and a better product. But guys, that's going to do it for this video, and I hope this gave you some useful information on the Whoop Light VTX. I know we got kind of in the weeds here, so if you are looking for a higher level review, make sure you check out my previous video where I reviewed the Whoop Light bundle. I'd also encourage you to subscribe to the channel now if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. I've got a lot in the works. I'm actually working on more videos on this specific product and on HD Zero Whoops, and I'd love to have you along for those. But thanks so much for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next video.